Hi everyone, welcome back to um, the next part of this series where what we're going to do is build the spinning targets and the panel targets and get those working. So the spinning target first. This is one we shoot it, it spins around and then blows up after a, a second or so. Again we want to inherit from target base, so right click on our BP target base, press create child blueprint and name this one BP underscore spinning target. I mean you can call it whatever you want, but if you use the same names as, as me it might just make things easier as we go through this. Open BP spinning target and once again we inherit the two components that we set up. Target support, we're going to have a cube, they're both going to be cubes this time, so let's get a cube. We'll go for this shape underscore cube that's there. And just get this white cube that's built into Unreal. That's a little bit too big so I'm going to change its scale X, Y and Z all to 0 0.2. Okay, so that's the bit that if the player shoots this we don't care, nothing happens. Next thing we want is to change our target component to also be that cube. I'm using just basic shapes because they're built into Unreal, but you could use whatever meshes you wanted to here. And we want the sizes for this to be... Uh, well, first of all, it wants to be a lot uh, thinner, I think, so we'll make it 1 in X is fine, 0 0.1 in Y to make it a little bit of a like thin board, and we'll make it taller than it is wide so it can be 2 in Z. And then we'll just move that up a bit, like this. There we go, just so that one's standing on top of that one. And the idea is, if we just go to rotate, that when the player shoots it, this top part is going to spin around for a little while and then explode, and that's how this one is going to work. Okay, so let's go over to the event graph. Delete everything that's there already. And what we need to do is, first of all, we need to add a variable to detect has this been hit or not because we need to know have it, has the target been hit to know whether to make it spin or not. So go to a variables area here, click to add a variable. I'm going to call that has been hit question mark, and it should already be a boolean variable. Uh, if it's not, you can change it to be a boolean. Here, booleans are just true or false values. If you hit compile, you see the default value is false. Uh, unticked, ticked would be true. We want to leave this on false. And now what we're going to do is slightly change the behavior of the um, do hit event. Remember last part we set up a do hit event in our target base. We're going to modify how that works a little bit. In our spinning target, right click, type event do hit. And there we go, there's our do hit event and we can basically define what that means in this. But while still making use of the stuff in the base blueprint as you'll see in a minute. Do have that though, if you right click and just type do hit rather than event do hit, you will get this. And that is you just trying to make the do hit function run, you're not actually redefining it. You want this one, event do hit. What happens when we get hit then? Well we'll say, first of all, get that boolean variable and set it to true by ticking that there. And then we'll have a slight delay, so delay. The delay can last for one second. And after that, all we want to do is run run the version of do hit that we set up in the base blueprint. You know, this. We don't need to copy and paste all this in. What we can do is just right click on spinning targets version of do hit and press add call to parent function. And what that will do, it will go off into the target base blueprint and run the target base version of do hit. So when we, sh when we run do hit on our spinning target, it will do set this to true, wait one second, then jump into the target base blueprint and do spawn emitter, play a sound, destroy the actor. And we can see this working now without doing anything else. Let's just compile that, drop a spin target in, rotate that this way a bit. If we play this, we'll hit it, there's a one second delay and then it blows up. So I mean that's not much use to us right now is it, but it's because we're missing a little bit in here. What we want to do is every frame, if do hit is true, uh, if has been hit is true, sorry, spin around. If we want to do something every frame, we use the tick function. So right click, event tick, tick. For now, think of tick as a function that runs every frame. It doesn't have to, it can be decoupled from the frame rate, but let's not get into all that. What is it that we're going to do here then? Well, every tick, first of all, get this boot has been hit variable and check to see whether it's true or false, which you do using a branch. Because branches are something you use absolutely all the time, you might want to get used to the keyboard shortcut for this, which is just hold B for branch and click, and then it will build one. In condition, we can wire our has been hit variable. And now, if has been hit is true, it will run whatever we put here. 
a false whatever we put here. So we don't care if the target hasn't been hit yet, so nothing goes on false. On the true branch, we want to take our target component, so drag that into the blueprint here, and make it spin around. And to do that, we're going to use something called add local rotation. What add lo local rotation does is it's like you selecting the component in here and then spinning it around in you know, whichever way you want like that. What we want to do is spin around the z-axis like this by some amount. So um, first off, we don't want to specify this as a rotator, which is what this um, pin here is, but we can right click on that, say split struct pin, and it will break it into three separate numbers for us, which is what we want. And you may notice there's a problem here based on what I've said. If I type say 100 into Z, the Z rotation. I said that tick around every frame, didn't I? So on a machine running at, say, 60 FPS, this is going to run twice as often as on a machine running at 30 FPS. So surely we'll rotate faster on a machine at 60 FPS. And that, and that is true, we would do. And this is where this delta seconds thing comes into play. Delta seconds is the number of seconds that have gone by since the last tick, or since the last frame. And we can use that to scale how much we rotate. If we drag away from delta seconds and search for float multiplied by float and type in some number for the multiplication, let's say 2000 and wire this into our Z, what we've basically got now is a situation where we will rotate by 2000 degrees per second no matter what the frame rate is. Why? Well, the num let's just stick with 30 and 60 FPS. I know there are other frame rates, but at um, 60 FPS, the amount of seconds that have gone by since the last frame are 0 0.0167 seconds. So we'd be rotating on each tick by 2000 multiplied by 0 0.0167. On a machine running at 30 FPS, the amount of time that's gone by since the last frame would be 0 0.033333 recurring seconds. And so we'd rotate on each frame by 0 0.033333 multiplied by 2000. So on the machine running at 60 FPS, we're rotating twice as often, but we're rotating by less each time, and it all just cancels out and everything will move at the same speed. Let's save and compile that. I don't think there's anything else we need to do in here. So let's test it. Let's go back to our map. Maybe I'll copy a few more of these in, so I'll select that. Space a few times to get back to the Move tool. Hold Alt, Drag. Alt and left click, drag to make a few more copies. And let's see. So if we shoot those now, see. They have that second of spinning around and then they explode. And these other ones still work the way they did. So getting back to this idea of inheritance, you can see how we've been able to modify the behaviour that we defined in base target. Basically with spinning target, it's as though we've added an extra little bit here and said, right, before you do all these three things, we want you to do this extra little bit. And it works, and it saves us having to redo all of this work. Next one then, let's make the panel target. This is like the looks like a for sale sign that you see outside houses, at least here in the UK, which is like a long stick with a board on it, and when we shoot the board it will fall over. As you may imagine, we want to base this on our target base blueprint again, so we right click on that, say create your blueprint class, and we call this one BP underscore target panel. They're all BP underscore something, so yeah, that'll do. And in here, what do we want? Well, we're going to use two cubes again. We're just going to scale them a little bit differently. For the support, this is like the long stick that the target is nailed to. We're going to go with that shape cube. And rather than having it like that, we're going to want this to be... How do we want it? Let's have 0 0.2 in X to make it thinner this way. We'll have 0 0.1 in Y, so it's like a thin board. And then we'll make it a bit taller. We'll say 2.5. So now we have that. Then for target, this just would be a vaguely square board. So what we'll do is get shape cube again. And we'll change that to be, uh, what do we want it to be? Do we want it to be if one in X is fine. Let's leave that 0 0.1 in Y to make it thinner like this. And we'll leave it as one in Z. Then all we need to do is move that upwards like that and then pull that forwards a bit so it looks like it's sticking on the front of this stem and then there you go, that's all we need to do there. Now we need to do our event graph. And this one's going to be a little bit different. We need to start with event do hit again, so right click just as we did in spinning targets, grab hold of event and do hit. And so once again we're redefining what event do hit means but we can still refer back to the 
base blueprint just as we did in spinning target. Now to get this to fall over, let me place one of these in the world just to show you what I mean. When this gets hit, it wants to fall over like this, just basically rotate backwards. Because we want that rotation to be essentially like an animation, we're going to rotate it over time. We are going to need a timeline. Um, we're going to use quite a few timelines throughout this, but since it's the first time we've done it and you may not have used timelines before, I'll explain this one in a bit more detail than I will the next few. But anyway, first thing we want is add timeline. A chemical timeline zero, that's, that's fine. We double click on this timeline. What timelines us do is sort of animate a value over time. So we could have a number and say, well, that's going to animate over the course of 0 0.2 seconds from 0 to 90, and then use that to drive the angle of our target from 0 to 90, or actually be 0 to minus 90 to make it fall over. So let's do that. First of all, we need to click on this add float track at the top, this thing that looks like an F. And this gives us a timeline. The length of the timeline it says here is 5 seconds, that's a bit long. It would take 5 seconds for the thing to fall over and we don't want that, so let's change that to 0 0.2. And then we need to add some keys. If you've done any keyframe animation before, this will be very familiar. We right click, say add key, and then we can set the time and the value for that key. It will be 0 seconds and the value will be 0. We right click again, say add key again, and this time time of 0 0.2 seconds, so the end of the timeline, value minus 90. And then if you press these two sets of arrows here, zoom horizontal, zoom vertical, it might be a bit easier to see what we're doing. So imagine this timeline playing, then over the course of 0 0.2 seconds this value is moving down from 0 to negative 90. And then that's what's going to drive our rotation on the target. What we'll do here, first of all, though, see it's called new track 0 because I forgot to rename it. We right click on new track 0, press rename, and we'll call this just something like target x rotation. Go back to the event graph. What we're going to do, so when the target's hit, timeline starts playing, every time the timeline updates, we want to um, do something called this set actor rotation. There are a couple of ways of doing this, but we'll do a set actor rotation. What set actor rotation does is it's like you rotating the actor in the world like this. And what we're going to do is make it fall over. Once again, we don't want to specify this as a rotator, so right click on new rotation, split, do a split struct pin to get three numbers, and our target x rotation can just go into there. But what about the y and z rotation? We don't want them to be zero. We want them to be whatever they were. We don't want to change them. What we'll do in that, in that case then is do a get actor rotation. So this asks, what is the rotation of this actor now? We'll do a split struct pin on that, and then just wire the Y and Z straight through. So think about what's going to happen here. As this timeline updates, X rotation is going to be whatever that graph is doing, and Y and Z are going to stay as wherever they were. And then just for good measure, we'll say when the timeline finishes playing, call the base version of this. We'll, we'll do a, you know, spawn the particles, make a sound. Once again, that's just right click on this event do hit, press add call to parent function, and then wire this in like this. And assuming we've got no bugs, what will happen is this timeline will play, and this number will animate down from 0 to minus 90. As it does so, it will update the rotation of this actor, and then when the timeline finishes, we jump into the parent do hit function, do emitter, sound, destroy. Let's give that test. So, let's see. <laughs> so now we've got our three target types, in basic form at least. This new one being this little panel where hit the stem, nothing happens, hit the target, falls over, blows up, and of course the spinning ones that we just made. Next video, we'll deal with uh, getting the targets to reveal themselves and sort of arranging these into a little target range. Nothing too complicated. See you next time.